Hello everyone, welcome back to another Tactics video on the channel for FIFA 23. I'm Ash and today we are going to cover Giampiero Gasparini's Atalanta system. Really fun to do, something that we did back on FIFA 20 and we've not really covered them since. Obviously, tremendous kind of unit that they've been for some years now. Um, I'm really excited to get into this one today. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it as well. We're in particular looking at the 3 4 one, two, something where in which they've got more of an out-and-out out central attack midfielder here. In this case, we've got Prashelic. Um, you know, they've also kind of fluctuated between this and a 3-4-3 three, three as well with kind of the three attackers. Um, so if you guys do want to see that system as well, then let me know in the comment section and I can absolutely do that at some point in the future. Before we get into it, let me quickly say if you want to see how this tactic ranks compared to all of the other systems on my channel that I've covered, check out my Patreon because you can get access to my FIFA 23 custom tactics package on there with rankings, ratings, strengths, weaknesses, suitable teams to play as for every system. You've also got access to exclusive tactics videos that are only on Patreon, uh, behind the scenes access, Discord server access, early access to videos, fancy football access and a whole lot more. Also, do go and check out my video games podcast. The links to them are all down below. Good way to get your video games fixed. And with that being said, let's get into the system. So, first things first, what do you want to do? Well, you want this 352 system. That is what you're looking for because that's going to give you really the, the best balance and the best replication of the shape. Um, the one thing that you are going to want to change is this position with Cope Miners. Rather than defensive midfielder, you're going to want to make sure that you switch him to left central midfielder. This is a great way to replicate his role because he does push further forward and support those attacks much more. And as a result, you're going to be able to get him into those positions with him being a central midfielder as opposed to a defensive midfielder. Other than that though, there are no position changes. So let's talk about what they do tactically. Well, defensive style, we are press after possession loss, allowing you to employ that counter pressing system that they do very well. Otherwise, they do like to get men behind the ball if they don't win it back relatively quickly and then they become very hard to break down and it really provides a good balance between those two. The width is on 30, the lowest you can have it before it does get too narrow. This is enable them to again kind of cut out those gaps and be a little bit more pragmatic in certain situations. Uh, and then the depth is on 70, giving you a high line, something that they exploit very, very well. It's something that I get exploited by in the gameplay that you'll see. Unfortunately, EA's data reviewers just can't rate. They can't watch games and rate accurately. So the likes of Akoli only have 55 pace. So do bear that one in mind. Obviously, you are going to naturally need faster defenders to fill in those gaps in order to play this high line. Build up play offensively. We have it on slow build up, allowing you to play through the thirds. But it's also worth bearing in mind that they won't always look to do that. Sometimes they can skip the midfield, go straight to the striker, be more direct. And the way you're going to be able to replicate that is through forward runs. It's not only that, but they have lots of running, lots of movement, just so much fluidity in abundance. And so as a result, you're going to be able to kind of see this in action more with forward runs on compared to if it was possession, for example. Width is on 70, stretching the play out nice and wide. Again, something that was a difference in when they played with this system with the central attack midfielder as opposed to kind of the free attackers. Um, so they're able to do that a little bit more and kind of, again, plays into that forward runs element as well because you're able to kind of create that space and then you get those runners into the space created. Uh, the players in the box is on eight, giving you four players in the box. They're very, very cross heavy. They score a lot of goals this way and it's something that enables them or kind of dictates how they kind of sign their fullbacks, what type of player they're looking for in those wing backs, because they're looking for those taller, stronger minded players. As you can see here with Myler and Hatterball, both of these guys, six foot one, very strong, obviously lots of energy. Um, and, you know, they kind of act as another focal point, really, in those crossing situations, particularly at the back post. Both of the corners of every kicks in this case are on four. So let's talk about the player instructions then. Starting off with the keeper, we've got Musso in goal. He's on comes for crosses and sweeper keeper, of course, playing into uh, the use of that high line that we did speak about earlier. And with the three centre-backs. Now, a little bit of a tricky one here, because whilst the central defender is normal, both of the wide centre-backs are on joining attack. However, it doesn't work. It the instruction just does not work on FIFA. So really the best way you're going to replicate this is to kind of go forward with them on the ball, do give and go passes, get them running on. Because these centre-backs, particularly Toloi, 
do a really good job of pushing forward and helping support uh, kind of the attacking moves. They really act as those kind of deeper line playmakers at times, and then it gives license for the likes of Coat Miners, for example, to get further forward. Um, and it's it's just really impressive. But like I say, it doesn't work on people. So this is going to have to come from you, the player. With the two wing backs, both of these guys are on the same instructions. They're on comeback on defense to get them tracking back. That's how you'll see them form a back five. The game does a really good job of kind of recognizing that you don't have fullbacks and those guys will help to bed in with the back line. The chance creation is stay wide. Naturally, these guys are going to be on the touchline, creating that width as much as possible to help stretch out uh, the shape and therefore the opposition. And then support runs is on get in behind as they'll look to kind of run in behind. And they both score, particularly Myler, score goals through this way as well. It's not only looking to do it in the wide areas, but also they will sometimes angle their runs as well. And it does a really good job of just adding to the that kind of forward run mentality that we've spoken about. And the support on crosses for both of them, as we've already mentioned, is getting to the box for the cross. With Darun at defensive midfield, his defensive behaviour is cut passing lanes, it's a zonally orientated press, and then the second support is stay back whilst attacking. Of course, he's going to be the one who's going to protect these guys going forward, particularly when you've got the likes of Taloy, who is going to kind of overlap him at times. Um, and add another body into that mix. Darun is going to fill in for him nicely. And playing into that, his interceptions are aggressive interceptions. So try and kind of emphasize that aggressive defensive midfielder that we've got within this role. His defensive position is cover wing, and his position freedom is stick to position. Now, obviously, slightly different with Coat Miners because he's at central midfield. So the instructions are actually kind of set differently. Uh, the only one you are going to actually want to change is attack support. You want to stay back while attacking. And the reason why you want this is because if you do have it on get forward or balance, he's going to occasionally make those runs in beyond the striker. And that's not what you're looking for. What you're looking for with him as a central midfielder is for his starting position to just be further up the field. And that is what we're trying to replicate here. So with regards to stay back while attacking, he will still support attacks, but he's not going to like try to run in beyond the striker. His support and crosses is balanced. His inception is normal, cover wing on defensive position, and his positioning freedom is stick to position. So next, with the central attacking midfielder, then defense support is come back on defense. As we've spoken about earlier, they like to track back and get bodies behind the ball if and when they need to. Support on crosses is getting to the box for the cross, playing into that kind of high volume of crosses that they do kind of produce in each game. This guy will need to be an aerial threat or pick up um, those kind of pockets of space within the box. And then his positioning freedom is also stick to position. With the two frontmen, starting off with Adam Ola-Lukman, who's of course having an inspired season so far, truly his best season of his career so far. His support runs are drift wide. He will look to come and support not only those half spaces, but also just the wing backs in general and those wide areas to make sure that you can kind of get that kind of fluidity that we spoke about earlier and that high volume of movement. Very, very hard to track them because they really are drifting around in all sorts of positions. Playing into that is mixed attack with his attacking runs. This was very hard to replicate because he sometimes drops off more like a, a bit more like a false nine showing for the ball because he then likes to drive forward with the ball. But he'll also sometimes run in behind and utilize that pace. And it was a struggle to really kind of replicate this accurately. So the best way to do it is definitely mix attack, I do believe. And sometimes he's going to show for the ball more, um, whereas other times he's going to look to kind of run in behind. Defensive support is also on comeback on defence. With Hoyland on the other side, who again, he's having a really good season and looking like he's going to be a focal point for Atalanta going forward. He's on stay central with his support runs. He's really that, that out and out target more than anything. And that's why you also got him as stay forward on his defensive support as well. And then his attacking runs are on getting behind. And he's going to be the one who's really going to play on the last man relentlessly. Now, yes, sometimes he does back into the opponents and look to get people playing in around him. But generally, he's looking to run in behind. And that is why we really stuck with getting behind to this as opposed to mixed attack. So with that being said, it just about rounds it off for this system. If you want to see the 3 for free that I did mention earlier, please do hit me up and let me know in the comment section down below. And if you've got any questions about that tactic, uh, then hit me up, hit me up, and I will do my best to get back to you uh, about the system and try and answer any concerns that you may have. If you want to see how this tactic ranks compared to all of the other systems, don't forget to check out my Patreon. The links of them are down below. 
and also check out the video games podcast that links is also in the description and in the comment section as well if you do want your video games fix you can check out the fifa tactics subreddit for any of you reddit users for regular tactics uploads from a whole range of people including myself and also give me a follow on twitter the link to that is down below with that being said hit the subscribe button ring the bell to get notifications every time i upload we're now going to go into some gameplay so you can see the tactic firsthand see how i was cheated out of a win yet again and until next time I will see you soon. Comunicazione di servizio, la signorina. 